Spoiler warning, the following theory is based on a lot of the events that happen in chapters 12 and 13 of Volume 8 of Ruby. If you haven't seen both of those, I highly recommend you turn back now to avoid being spoiled, but come back once you've watched them. Each arc in Ruby takes us from one amazing kingdom to another, and because of that, as well as a lot of talk about vacuo within the show, it seems like the obvious choice for where the gang will go next when they finish dealing with the drama of Atlas and Mantle. That being said, we here at Cartoon Universe have a theory that Volume 9 will not take place in vacuo, but rather in another world entirely. When Volume 8 first started airing, the showrunner, Shawcross, did an interview where he was asked about whether or not we would be going to see Vacuo soon. And while he did not want to confirm or deny anything, he did say that there might be a detour on the way, but we definitely would be remiss if we didn't go see Vacuo at some point, maybe some point soon. With Vacuo right on the other side of the one-way portal system that Ambrosia set up in Chapter 12, there aren't a lot of other places that the Ruby Gang could seemingly end up if we are going to take a detour. However, before they began their evacuation plans, Ambrosia left the Ruby Gang with one warning, that whatever they do, they should not allow themselves to fall off of the bridge that connects these different portals. The bridge system itself exists in a dimensional space similar to the one that the relics all seem to exist in, one that the gang had hoped would be a safe place, as any hub world created in Remnant would always run the risk of a grim attack, something we saw right on the other side of the portal to Vacuo. Cinder of course crashed their evacuation party, and again, I ask you to turn away now if you have not seen Chapter 13. She came to stir up some trouble, and in the end, Yang ended up falling off of the bridge and into the dark. To make it even more strange, instead of just fading into the black, she is overcome by some strange lighting pattern, similar to how a semblance looks when it's in heavy use or about to break. Yang fades into nothingness after the light passes over her. While it would be easy to say that Yang is dead, it doesn't seem likely that they are killing off one of their title characters like this, and instead, I think what is about to happen is that the other girls are going to follow Yang, whether on purpose or by accident, and Volume 9 will take place largely wherever this strange void leads them. Evidence for this exists both in and out of the show. First, while Vacchio hasn't been explored much within the show, it's a prominent location in one of the Ruby side novels, Before the Dawn. According to the producers, this was something they wanted to include because they knew Vacuo was a place that wouldn't get as much time to be explored as other places like Atlas had been. While it could simply mean that once they get to Vacuo, the plot is going to move them elsewhere, it seems to indicate that whatever is eating up Vacuo's screen time is coming before we get there. In an interview with Miles Luna, one of the other writers on the show, he also said that Season 9 is not just the one he's most excited about the fans seeing, but one that he says is going to be entirely different from all of the others, something they have been planning since before Volume 1. Now, as surprising as this may seem, it was actually something they had been foreshadowing in every episode of this volume in the opening credits. In them, the ground cracks beneath Team Ruby, and we watch them fall into darkness. While it does play out fast, if you slow it down, you can see that Yang is the first to fall, followed quickly by Blake and then the others. As Ruby falls, we see a strange light overtake her, one with two distinct patterns to simply be the glow of the light of the Staff of Creation that is floating above her. Instead, it more closely resembles the same light pattern that washed over Yang as she fell into the dark, indicating that the Ruby Gang really will fall into the dark with Yang. This of course raises a few questions. One, where are they going? And two, how will they return? And to answer those, we'll need to try and understand what this darkness actually is. In the opening, the Ruby crew falls through the darkness and monstrous claws come out after them, with the dark shifting to resemble the Grim. I doubt it's just a pool of Grim essence like the one that Salem fell through, as visually it seems to be a complete lack of anything, whereas the Grim is very much a very physical, slimy pool. That being said, the way Yang disappeared in it gives the impression that she was destroyed, that whatever this is is tied to the God of Darkness, who reveled in destruction as opposed to creation. In some way, these three things are tied, the God of Destruction, the Grim, and this darkness that seems to destroy. It's a bit too soon to tell, but it gives me the impression that the Grim are simply the physical manifestation of this kind of void, this absence of creation where creation goes to die. So what will they find there? 
As a part of this void, the characters could experience things differently. Everything that had been destroyed in some way could be present there. I imagine that our characters' psyches will be wild, but still intact, giving them a sense of being alive while constantly being pulled in various directions, seeing people who have died or events that have already passed, facets of reality that are just a blur or things that already happened or been destroyed. I imagine it playing out somewhat like the Volume 6 chapter, The Lost Fable, where the characters are all witnessing Salem and Ozma's origin stories, but are unable to interact or be a part of it. Though without Jin and narrative cohesion, it will be more like a bad dream or nightmare that the characters experience. But I think it will give them some key information. Without the binds of reality, the writers would be able to show us more lost fables, more aspects of Salem and the two gods, and the history of the world that we have not seen before. Perhaps even flashes of previous generations, including characters like Summer Rose, Ruby's mom, and what may or may not have led to her demise. But it may also not be as simple as existing in a strange dreamlike void. In Chapter 9 of this volume, Oscar and Oz discuss another popular fairy tale of Remnant, one about a girl who fell through Remnant. While it doesn't appear in the anthology novel detailing various fairy tales from Remnant, the two talk about how the girl changed after falling through Remnant and seeing another world, but came back sad. Fairy tales in Remnant are often based on somewhat true events within its world's history, and while the word world could be used to describe many things, it is entirely possible that they just end up falling into an alternate reality, entirely different from the one we know of Remnant. That being said, this fairy tale also seems to be another example of Salem's story becoming a popular tale among the people of Remnant, perhaps a reference to her literally being thrown around the world by the gods and coming out immortal and then later infected by the Grimm. It could also not be based on Salem herself, but rather some other girl who met a similar fate in the strange darkness of the vault. After all, Ambrosius gave our characters a warning for a reason, perhaps it had even happened before. With that in mind, I think we will find the answer to my second question, how will the girls get back? Whether someone else has fallen into this particular void before or not, Oz is the one who set up these vaults, and the one who should know the most about it. While the girls may make it back by who knows what means that they establish only after they fall through it, right now, Oz seems to be the one who could help them get back, perhaps redeeming himself after abandoning them for the last two volumes. Regardless of where they really go or how they return, I think they will come back from this experience with broken hearts after learning some dark truths, much like in The Lost Fable, but with more information on how they can actually turn the tides and defeat Salem in some way. Even if this darkness is just a metaphor for the kind of experience Salem had in the Grimm, I think it will be used to highlight just how difficult it is not to succumb to the darkness, to retain your sense of self outside of the darkness and destruction, and in that way, the girls will prove that they are stronger than Salem. She fell into the void and came back changed, and while the girls may come back different, I don't think they will come back worse for it, and because of that, they will know that they are able to overpower her. At least, that's my theory for now, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The final chapter of Volume 8 is coming, and we're going to have a lot to talk about when it does, and you won't want to miss it. See you next time!